Hi, I'm here at Kenny's reading from my new novel, How to Build a Boat. And it's going to open with Jamie, who's um, just about to start his first day at secondary school. Jamie played the day out in his mind. And as his bedroom filled with rain sounds from a sensory machine Owen picked up in Argos, the walls lifted to pink, reddened, and reassured him that he was floating inside a lava lamp. He wished the day, Monday, being an even date, 26, in the year, however, of an odd number, 19, and an odd age, perhaps the oddest and most unlucky age of all, 13, that the day would go according to plan. Since he was born at 3 p.m., three was his lucky number, and he whispered good morning three times, stretched, then ran his hand along his leg and counted new leg hairs, five, six, seven, seven. An odd number was no cause for celebration unless it was three. So he traced along a warm purple vein and pinched a hair between his finger and thumb and plucked it out of his body. A body which was dangerously volcanic like Kilauea in Hawaii. A body that was erupting. He climbed out of bed with his arms stretched backwards, gripping the ladder like a gymnast before a dismount. Jamie then ran his hand on a neat pile of books on his bottom bunk. When he arrived in primary school, a slew of birthday invites came. Polite pattern of parents. But soon they trickled to single figures. And by year two, all the colourful invites stuffed in his school bag with monkeys or clowns and elastic writing in different coloured inks stopped altogether. Aside from new boy Terry's outlier, and that invitation had proved another disaster. At which time the bottom bunk of Jamie's bed, once considered for sleepovers, was relegated or elevated for Jamie's books of great importance. The books were left in piles along the bare mattress like tortoises with meticulous handwritten notes pressed on their immaculate covers. Date and place of publication, date started, date completed, initial reaction and most pressing, Jamie O'Neill's star ratings. The star ratings were harsh, and among the piles only one book received five hand-drawn Jamie O'Neill stars, The Complete Tales and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe. From his bedroom window he scanned the morning sky over the identical tiled roofs. Marie's car was gone next door, and he stared at the sky ablaze with red. Shepherd's warning, shepherd's warning, red sky at night, delight. Jamie, Jamie switched on his computer and sat in his pyjamas, plucking the remaining hairs from his warm leg. Leg hair perplexed him. Eyebrows stopped sweat and Marie explained how pubic hair safeguards against infection, but he could not understand why he had leg hairs. They were a nuisance, much like hairs on his top lip. Marianne Mirzakani's lecture on dynamic moduli spaces of curves opened on YouTube. She appeared smiling. These chalks are great, she said, and Jamie smiled back at the woman with the pixie haircut and green jumper who made him feel safe as she scribbled on the board and spoke in an inspired flurry about flows of defined bundles while drawing beautiful shapes. She was the first woman fields medalist, a mathematician who wanted to be a writer, and when she worked, her daughter said, it was as though she were painting. <laughs>